What Tobermore have done to ensure that your paving arrives in good quality standard, they've put these biodegradable beads between the slabs to ensure there's no scratching. And if it happens that you have got the odd little scratch, they can be removed quite easy just by rubbing off like that. As you can see, we've got the picture frame already in place. To ensure that your patio can look as good as it can be, we need to go off a straight edge and that will ensure that your patio is going to look absolutely fantastic through the laying process. Even better what Tobermore have done, they've got you a laying pattern and the five sizes, they come in a 300 by 300, a 300 by 450, a 600 by 300, a 450 by 450 and a 600 by 450. Easy laying. When using multiple packs, you must make sure you mix from all packs to ensure a good blend. When using one pack, you must thoroughly mix the slabs to ensure a good blend. So I'm here with Sam. Sam works for Tobermore, never laid any paving in his life, but Sam is going to demonstrate to you today and show you how easy the process is in laying this product. Sam, I think that a really good tip for when you're laying this paving, it doesn't matter how big or strong that you are, right, and how long you've been doing it, it's so important that you look after your, your body. So what I would say is that when you're picking these products up, make sure you bend your knees, keep the body, keep the, the slab close to your body so it just takes the weight off your back. It's absolutely amazing how quickly this patio is being laid and Sam's just doing it with ease. It's just never laid a patio before, but look. You need to avoid those cross joints because it's a weak point and it doesn't look good aesthetically. But have a look, we've done this purposely so you can actually see it. This is what we call a cross joint where all slabs form on one cross. It's at this point, sometimes you may just deviate from your lay and pattern because you're approaching that cutting edge. And one thing you need to avoid is those straight lines. So in this case, we'll be cutting this slab to go in that position and avoid that straight line. It's so important to understand that it's okay to put two 450 by 450s next to each other, side by side. It's absolutely fine, as long as you don't repeat that pattern too much throughout your patio. Well, because of the random size slabs that we have in this patio, and it's a four meter by four meter, we've been able to reduce the number of cuts required. In this case, there is only six cuts. So we're at that point now, we can start measuring our cuts. In this case, we have a 450 by 300, and this will do two cuts. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna measure the gap that we have here. And remember, measure both sides just in case there might be a possibility of it running out. And then we transfer those measurements onto the slab that we're gonna cut. Once you have your cut piece, you can install it into the patio. It is important to place the cut edge against the border. So we've been able to get two cuts from one unit. You can cut this slab now using a disc cutter, or if you wish, you can hire a wet saw from your local tool hire. We thoroughly recommend when using a disc cutter that you use the correct PPE. In this case, goggles, mask, ear defenders, and gloves. In order to keep the dust down as much as possible, it's recommended to use a water suppressant feature like this with your disc cutter. All the cuts are now in and they fit absolutely perfect. 
We've measured twice, cut once, and we've minimized the waste. A major advantage of using the historic bracken is that they have these spacer nibs, creating the space which will allow you to brush your jointing compound into. Well, we're just checking the final levels of this patio and it's looking absolutely perfect. The major advantage of using the historic paving is that we don't need to compact it. But one thing that we need to do, we need to ensure that there's no lipping and we do that using a rubber mallet. 